Welcome to American Women Who Bear Arms and ABBA TV. Hi, I'm John James, and I'll be your host for ABBA Profiles. And today, we're going to talk with Ballistic Blonde. Ballistic Blonde in Florida. It's no secret that you're in Florida, is it? <laughs> no, no. I definitely gave up on making it a secret that I'm in Florida. <laughs> um, and and it's, it's no secret that you, you like to shoot. Uh, I was trying to keep that one a great secret. You though. were, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, ballistic blonde. The cat's out of the bag on that one. Uh, oh, dang it! Okay. Yeah. And <laughs> you, you are making some waves in the shooting world. You've got a lot of fans on Facebook. You've got your website going, ballisticblonde.com, uh, where you've got more information about yourself. And I want to address a little bit of that. I, I want to ask you, first of all. What got you interested in shooting? Now, I know you grew up around guns. Your dad had pistols and shotguns and rifles and all that. But did did you ever really get into it when you were younger? Actually, no. I was never really into it too much until I was an adult. And um, it was actually... It's, uh, <laughs> it's kind of controversial a little bit, actually, because I know a lot of people say that it didn't happen, but um, I was living with my sister and her kids at the time of Sandy Hook, and once I saw what could happen to children, I uh, looked at my nephews and my niece and I decided that, you know what, if anything ever was going to happen to them and I have the opportunity to change it, then I felt that it was my responsibility to take care of them. So I decided that at that point I would go off and start getting training and instruction, and then even more so I started noticing how crazy the world is in general. And I just... I decided to go forward with it at that point, but if it, um, I, I guess you could say that with all the anti-gunners that are going after Sandy Hook, um, I definitely went in the right direction after that happened. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. and, and when you say the world is crazy, there's no question about it, and uh, it's getting more and more dangerous, and uh, literally to, to live without a gun, especially in a household with kids, is getting more and more dangerous because you hear of all these these home invasions. Now we have ISIS, and uh, mainstream media will not cover uh, the fact that ISIS is now they're infiltrating the United States, and they make oh, no yeah. they make no secret out of the fact they want to kill people who don't adhere at least the radical. And I'm talking about the radical Islamists. Uh, make no secret about the fact they want to kill people who do not. Uh, go along with their their way of thinking, and anybody who insults their prophet, and it's it's a scary time. Uh, but moreover, it's a good time to be a woman and be protected, is it not? It's always a good time to be a woman and be protected. Uh, I don't. I think whether ISIS was around or whether or not people were going crazy, I, that's. Uh, I think it's our human right and our human instinct to want to be able to protect ourselves from anything and everything just as i mean animals have that same instinct so uh, uh yeah but especially now especially now i i i don't know i mean i would have done this 10 years ago had i known that i could have been 10 times better than i am today <laughs> but even so uh, whether you be a woman or a guy, now is definitely a good time to be carrying and packing. Absolutely, and uh, I, I certainly want to, and I know you you uh, subscribe to this. Um, anybody who's going to get a gun and carry a gun, uh, even if you're in a constitutional carry state, which I applaud those states that are constitutional carry, but as a responsibly armed person, um, you really need to get the training. You can't just, because you can have a gun, uh, get a gun and slap it in your pocket and think you're good. You really should get the training. How important is was training in making you feel not just safe and secure in having a firearm, but safe and secure in being able to use it? Oh, dear goodness. Um, I never feel like I've been trained enough. How about I put it like that? Yep. It, uh, I still feel, well, I know I have so much to learn. I don't feel that way. I know. Um, but when it comes to training and instruction, yeah, I went off and I got some training and instruction, and then I went off and got a gun and got my concealed uh, weapons and firearms license through Florida. 
And then at that point, I froze and realized that I wasn't trained enough to carry. And, I mean, went ahead and started car carrying, which I think, in hindsight, is probably one of the dumbest decisions I ever made. And But I still continued to push forward with getting training and instruction. So then at that point, I decided to start carrying. My fans might crucify me for it, but I started carrying, and I was not carrying chambered. But then at that point, I just built up my confidence from there. I knew that eventually I was going to get there, and sure enough, people will chew me out because, oh, well, you carry a Glock that doesn't have a safety on it. Well, I'm sorry. I believe in proper training and manners when it comes to handling a firearm. So uh, I feel confident enough in me carrying a Glock that I'm not going to be one of, one of these idiots who's going to go and shoot my leg off because yeah. I decided to carry with a Glock. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, and we, all in, it's all in the matter of training is all it is. It is. It's muscle memory. And uh, you, you mentioned a Glock. Uh, personally, I, I've got a Glock. I own a Glock. I've got a Glock 19. I love it. Uh, but personally, yeah. I, I'm not confident enough in myself even to uh, carry a Glock because of that, because all it has is the trigger safety. I'd sooner carry a, a, a Smith & Wesson uh, shield or something like that with a, a manual safety on it. But that's just me. Uh, the fact that yeah, you're yeah. secure in carrying uh, what you carry is that it's a personal decision, and that's great. Now, I know you had a, a time, you've, you've done a video, anybody can look it up on your page or on YouTube, uh, where you mm-hmm. tried you tried carrying with a purse. What, 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 <laughs> I knew that was going yeah. to come up. <laughs> well, now, <laughs> now uh, I'm but, not done with it yet. I'm not okay. done with it. I'm uh, planning on taking that even further. But anyway, sorry. On with your question. <laughs> no, that no, that's. Uh, I, I was interested in your re, your, the the way you reacted to carrying with a purse. You weren't really that overly enthused by it. Uh, what, what do you Definitely think? Not. What do you think the inherent problems are with carrying in a purse? And I think I know what you're going to say, but I'd rather hear it from a woman. Well, from a woman's perspective, first of all, uh, I mean, the main thing that we're always going to get, whether or not it's from a woman or from a man, it is ten times easier to have you well have a person be disarmed by taking their purse than mm. it is by taking a firearm off off their person right it's a lot easier to go uh, go and grab a purse off of a person than it is to come over and lift my shirt up and yeah, no, right, right. try and disarm me that way of course but um so that's problem number one and then on top of it you need to practice drawing safely and even with the videos that it it sounds like you watched we were practicing in ideal situations where there was nobody in our face, there was nobody trying to steal from us, there was nobody with their hands on us, and we we were practicing that, and I mean, we were having decent draw times, given the rigs that we had, and we were carrying with our normal purses, we weren't carrying with carry purses, but even so, if what I'm hoping to continue on with is the fact that this is not going to be an ideal situation. The fact that you're going to be drawing your firearm from your purse, the situation is going to be far less than ideal, and yet you still have to be able to draw the firearm that quickly, which is why I am hoping to be able to get a hold of some training firearms that uh, will still allow us to uh, time our time in between drawing and actually taking our shot. Mm -hmm. But... Um, I mean, that's just a matter of time, so that way I can actually get my hands on those and go ahead and start practicing that again and being able to get somebody who can perhaps even work with us on hand-to-hand self-defense because if someone is that close, you need to be able to possibly take time in between you drawing and firing your firearm. Absolutely. So there's a whole, there's a whole lot of, I mean, just self-defense that goes into it, and it's not just necessarily carrying a firearm on you in your purse. There's so much more to it than that. And women just really need to be able to see anything and everything that we can to make them realize that maybe it's not the best decision or if it's your only decision, what you need to do to prepare yourself. Absolutely. And, and I think of the uh, mothers and, you know, my wife is one of them who will go into a store, go into shopping, you know, grocery shopping or, or whatever in Walmart. 
And, uh, you know, you, the, the purse stays in the card when, you know, you're looking around at things. <laughs> yep. And, you know, that's, that's dangerous with kids. That's dangerous without kids. I mean, it's... Oh, yeah. It's, you yeah. know, it's just one of those mindless things people do. And, you know, oh, yeah. it's like you're leaving your gun there. And no, nobody knows it necessarily, but it's still leaving it uh, susceptible to being picked up and, and taken for the money. And then, oh, look, there's a gun in here, too. And uh, so, yeah. They're, yeah they're, and see, after going through something like that and realizing how vigilant that I had to be, given the fact that I was not carrying my firearm, my firearm on my person yeah. anymore, I realized how much more vigilant I had to be, the fact that I had to keep my purse in my lap at all times. I mean, really, I just, my, just all of that ended up going through the roof when it came to how just aware of where my firearm was at all times. Yeah. I mean, how I put my bag on my shoulder, all of those things came into play then at that point. Sure. And, I mean... Absolutely, yeah. You can't leave it laying around. You can't leave it in the car. You can't leave it around the kids. And, I mean, whether or not it's on your person or not, I mean, you still have to be vigilant about all of those things. But yep. it's even more so simply because a lot of women who start purse carrying, um, they're not necessarily doing it coming from a training background of carrying firearms. They're coming from a background of, okay, well, you know, I need to go ahead and start carrying a firearm. What's the easiest way for me to carry right. it? Okay, I'll put it in my purse. Yeah. So no. they already have all of these bad habits when of it course. comes to handling their purse yep. that they have to get rid of when it comes to now carrying a firearm. So, yeah, it's... um. I mean, it's even, it's so in-depth, everything that needs to be considered, and it's uh, it's an absolute headache, because I hate carrying a purse. I carry a little wristlet, and then I carry yeah. my big old firearm. There you, there you go. So, yeah, I mean, you're you're not only changing uh, one habit, you're changing two habits. You're, number one, you're going to be carrying a purse, which you don't normally do, and you're going to be carrying a gun in the purse, which may or may not make it easier to develop good habits from the get-go, but... Uh, still in all, very good advice, very good points. Now, uh, let me ask you a couple of questions about guns. What do you carry for a gun? What type? Of, well, you carry a Glock, like a Glock 19. Uh, well, I go back and forth in between a 19 and a 26. Yeah. Um, hoping that, given the fact that I work at a gun store, I'll be able to get my hands on a 43 here soon. Oh I was yeah. I'm glad to have the first one that came through. <laughs> we there you go. That yeah. Two hours. Yep. But uh, no, I'm definitely I'm hoping to carry a 43 here soon. Terrific. Yeah, that's a that's quite a quite a thin little unit, isn't that? That's a single stack nine, right? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I shot one out at uh, my the range that I am a regular at, Florida Firearms Academy in Tampa, and they had one show up just a couple weeks ago already in their rental program. And I basically went in and asked if it was broken in yet, and they said nope. And I was like, okay, I'll take care of that for <laughs> you. Take care of it. Not a problem, <laughs> she says. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and how, how do you carry, if I might ask? Uh, you, you carry it holstered, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I use a Raven Concealment Vanguard 2, which you uh, you might actually like and try with your Glock, and that might uh, boost your confidence a bit more in a, uh, carrying a Glock. But um, I'm, I'm trying out appendix carry right now, but holy yep. crap, it punches me in the thigh like there's uh, no tomorrow. Um, yeah. And then, uh, I mean, sometimes I'll carry at my 4 o'clock on my right, well, 4 o'clock right side, so then... Um, uh, those are pretty much my two main areas. I think that once uh, I start carrying a 43, I might be giving raw carry a try. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. We shall see. Well, geez, I wish I wish you the best of luck on all of that, and you're doing a great <laughs> you're doing a great job informing people. I, I love the fact that you've got a, a personality, you have fun with it, but you also practice uh, safe gun handling. And uh, you, you you do a great job, and we need more people like you out there. And I love the fact that uh, there are a lot of women. In fact, we just posted a story today out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Uh, another TV station did a uh, story about, oh, look, there are now tons of women carrying. It's like different markets, different sections of the United States are uh, seemingly just, it's coming to light that women are becoming a big part of the firearms uh, scene. And so they keep doing these stories, but I love them. You can't get enough of them. And uh, the yeah. more the more they do them, the more I, I like to see them. And so I, I say, keep it going. We get you we get you on TV there in uh, Florida, uh, Ballistic Blonde. And uh, TV so, is the goal. Yeah, well, <laughs> One ma- of them, anyway. Ma- 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 <laughs> make sure you send us the story. We'd like to have a TV show at some point featuring all women shooting, too, by the way. So 
would be awesome. You, I would I would be there. <laughs> you, I'll tell you what, you've gotten in with us. And uh, <laughs> I, I just I want to well, ask you. I want to ask you uh, before we stop here, um, women who are on the fence about shooting who think, geez, you know, I'd really like to try shooting, but um, I, I I really don't think I can. I'm afraid of guns. What advice do you offer to the woman who's sort of on the fence or maybe sort of leaning toward not trying a gun? Well, uh, social media is your friend right now. There's a whole bunch of us out there. It's, it's not just me. And I mean, as much as I would love for you to come and visit my site or my yeah. page, yeah, it's not just me out there who uh, could definitely give you words of encouragement. There's a lot of female trainers and instructors out there who can absolutely help you through anything that might be uh, might be a concern or is giving you any bit of hesitation. It, I know that I'm absolutely, I have actually husbands and boyfriends all the time messaging me saying, you know, can you please take my wife or my girlfriend shooting? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Yeah. And then, of course, it's, oh, but we're unfortunately not in Florida. I'm like, okay, so that's a bit of an issue. Right, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but no, absolutely. There are so many women that are getting into shooting that you would be hard-pressed to not find one that is already into it and that would not be able to help you through the first steps. Yeah. Uh, not, o- not only that, but start off with a low caliber. You don't have to take the peer pressure from your husband or from your boyfriend or whoever. Yeah. You start off with a forty caliber or 9 millimeter or forty five. You don't have to start off with large caliber. Go yes. and start with little twenty two and get right. comfortable with it and build yourself up from there. See, that's what I hate to see. I hate to see these guys, oh, we'll give her a forty five and we'll tell her it's it's not bad and, and watch her shoot it. And you, you see these videos on YouTube, and I, I would just like to find these guys and I'd like to slap them uh, right upside the head. I'd love to wring their neck. Yeah, ex- <laughs> you know, exactly, exactly. In this Sioux Falls story I was telling you about just a little while ago, um, they, 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 the woman that was a trainer started out with a Ruger SR-22 and because, you know, that's not going to surprise a woman and that's a nice way to start. And yeah, uh, any woman... Wa- is a great little gun. It is. So anybody watching this right now, uh, you, you, you want to listen to listen to us, listen to Ballistic Blonde and Uncle Johnny here. Uh, start out with a 22. That's what you want to begin with if you've never shot a gun before. It's, it's a real safe and easy gun to use and just learn it the right way. There are great groups like... Uh, Ballistic Blonde was saying, uh, I mean, you've got the well-armed woman. They've got places. They've got uh, uh, chapters all across the United States. And uh, check us out. Give us a, an email uh, at admin at awwba.com. Check out Ballistic Blonde's Facebook page or go to ballisticblonde.com and find out more about her. And they can email you right from there, can't they? Absolutely, yes. Ballisticblonde.com, or they can even message me on Facebook. There's many ways to get a hold of me. Terrific. Well, you're, you're, a, great, you're a great human being, and you're a, a fantastic advocate for uh, women shooters everywhere. And I appreciate well, your time, Ballistic well, thank Blonde. You, Johnny.